Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. I've seen George Miller's anecdote about how he saw that photo of your father hanging out with the biker gang from yeah. the first Mad Max. Did you know that, or did George just like surprise you on set with the photo one day? Well, I didn't know about the photograph. My dad, I, I, you know, had grown up watching these films with him. He used to race motorbikes. He was a part of a motorcycle club that a lot of the stunt riders from the first film were a part of. And so he had said they, you know, he knew them all. And then George found this photograph that someone sent to him with my dad and all these, all these blokes. So yeah. it was a kind of. The way it all came full circle was pretty nostalgic and cool. George Miller has spoken about, he looked down a list of a name, stopped at your name, and he was like, that's Praetorian Jack. That must be a dream for an actor to have somebody like George Miller be like, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, and I, I, he only told me that a few days ago. I didn't, yeah. but I mean, I knew he'd kind of gone that guy on some way or another, but yeah, I didn't know he'd stop looking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I can't quite believe I'm here. I just look at sort of that, you know, yeah. I go, I'm in that movie. That's amazing. You're not just in that movie, you're in the sequence that yeah. I feel everyone is going to be talking about, and I'm yeah, sure you're yeah. sick of talking about no, the Star to Die Ways section. I'm worried about, like, yeah. this finishing. I'm exactly. like, who I would talk to? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously a huge undertaking, but you can tell on screen it, it's so worth it. But for you, having worked on it for 78-odd days, how did it feel when it was finished? Was it kind of like... I was really <laughs> sad. Okay, I was really back. sad. I was like, yeah, no, I, it was like, it was kind of like, okay, we've done it. But I was like, I could have just gone on forever. Um, yeah, I loved doing it. Yeah, and it's it's because obviously that was the B camera film and then there was the other film. Yeah. So was that the first, did you start working on that sequence or was there other stuff? No, I, that? one of the first things I shot, well, I, one of the first things I shot was the, the being dragged. Around it. Yeah. Uh, I shot the scene walking down the road mm. where they first, where he first says something to her, uh, and you know that it's crazy that that was, those are the first few things I shot because you know those are sort of two sort of sequences one could feel incredibly apprehensive and nervous about, mm. and uh, and and they kind of happen very fluidly. Credit to George, really. Yeah, and Anya Taylor-Joy is one of the most exciting young talents around, but she's got massive shoes to fill here doing what Charlize did on Fury Road. For you, when you were working with her, was there a moment where you were like, no, yeah, she she's Furiosa. Like, I she's never really doubted good. that for a second. Mm. I knew she could do it. Yeah. And uh, I think she's... I think, uh, you know, it's a different journey. Mm. I think one of the difficult things is she has to be that furiosa at the end. She can't be that furiosa at the beginning. Yeah. There would be no journey. Mm. What would be the point of the film? Um, but of course, people come to see it. You, you, you get scared. You think, oh, they're going to want to see Charlie Theron's furiosa. And, mm. and, and Anya has to, has to work that journey. And I think she does it in the most brilliant way. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, she turned up in the mindset and the headspace and the enthusiasm and passion to craft something that wasn't um, a kind of mimic, but was her own take on the character. And the two characters are in both very different points of their life and, and very different parts of the sort of, you know, one is mythologized, one is in the building of it, you know? Yeah. And um, Anya is just incredible. I don't think there's many people on the planet that can tell that amount of story with that amount of depth and nuance with the subtlety and, 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 and a look, you know, and mm. she uh, she did an amazing job, made it her own. And I really think in a beautiful way, the two performances complement each other yeah. so well, you know? Absolutely, and I think the two characters that complement each other is Furiosa and Dementus, because Dementus yeah. is verbose, he's very flashy. Yeah. Um, and what I loved about this film compared to Fury Road, there's, there's more dialogue and there's yeah. a great moment that sticks in my head where someone refers to Dementus as anus pus, yeah, which I think is great. Yeah. Um, so for you as an actor, getting to tackle this kind of very Shakespearean almost dialogue yeah. that George Miller's crafted must be a joy. To oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I, I, um, I loved how unique the character was, you know. Mm. I loved the fact that there was a yin and yang quality between the two, you know, and they both had glimpses of one another and, and they're both products of the wasteland, both trying to survive in desperate times, but one acts out with nobility and one acts out in a far more brutal fashion. But the um, the mythology, the allegoric nature that exists within the two characters, um, and, you know, speaking from Dementis's point of view, there was a real arrested development there, you know, there was a sort of stunted growth in his mm. sort of 
his maturity due to, I'm sure, some traumatic experiences when he was younger. So he's kind of just a big kid, you know? He's just screaming out for attention. He wants to be acknowledged, he wants to be seen, he throws tantrums. Um, but there's a flamboyance and a fun and an impulsiveness to him, in violent impulsiveness yeah. at times. But um, that I found very unique and, and just so fun to explore. Yeah, it, and I think what people might not realize with this is that there is this heart at the story of this. Like it, it has those epic, crazy mm. action sequences that only George Miller can come up with, but there's real heart and like affection between yeah. the characters. Did that surprise you as well when you were reading the script or did you always know that George had planned this arc? Um, I felt like it, not to big up my own kind of, uh, but it was more about responsibility than anything else. But I, I you know, I felt, I felt that that was very key to the story working and, mm. and it was actually nice to be worrying about that rather than, you know, how one kind of, plays a certain kind of genre or is cool or you know anything else that one might go to in a, in a kind of panicked moment yeah. uh, you're just thinking about how you're telling that story yeah yeah it feels like throughout this press tour we've been hearing about the Star Away from nowhere sequence yeah. 78 day sequence that mm. I'm guessing you're kind of quite glad you weren't actually involved was, in because yeah, Domenos gets his own ones but it's not mate that. after coming from like <laughs> the extraction world and doing kind of 30 minute winners and 3,000 moves of choreography and just destroying my back and my legs and getting beat up and stuff. I was like, you guys can have it, go for it. And she handled it so well. You know, she she was she showed up every day with enthusiasm and just, you know, led like a champion through that whole process and committed to it. And the sequences, you can see it, you know, there's an authenticity to it and a grit, which is um, so impressive. So hats off to her and the entire stunt department. Yeah, you can see it on the screen now. And you've been lucky already in your career to work with really distinctive filmmakers. You've had Dave yeah. Fincher, Joanne Hogg, now George and Miller. really great actors. Uh, yeah, really great actors. Obviously, great directors choose yeah. great actors. Yeah. Um, how did George Miller compare? Or can you not compare it? Because this film and experience is just so different. I, I mean, I, you know, I don't know how George does what he does and is the man he is. That's mm -hmm. the thing. You just imagine something on this scale and you imagine somebody kind of incredibly tempestuous and irascible, you know, because th you could, because because of what the film is, and he's uh, he's. The, uh, but you know, it's it's. I'm sure Jung would have something to say about it. He's 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 this very complete human being. So he's very calm. He's very uh, courteous. He's very nurturing. He's uh, you know just a delight to be around. I mean, I've read and watched interviews with him talking about how he made this, and even in my head, I still can't yeah. comprehend just how you keep that all up in the yeah. thing. Actually, you, ha you have yeah. to be George to make it. You have to be yeah. that calm. Yeah. yeah, how does it feel when you see the final product after you've everything you've been through? Is it Does it give you a new appreciation for everything you went through on the film? Yeah, well? I mean, but, you know, I, I'd seen Fury Road, and I'd seen all the other Mad Max movies, and I'd seen Babe, and, you know, I... I I had no doubt, but yeah, still you do go, wow, George, wow. I mean, even mentioning Babe in the same word as yeah, that, it shows yeah. how great he is.